What's up guys, Mate here. Today I'm going to show you how to code your Teensy in Visual Studio Code. So first of all, you have to go to the official page of Visual Studio Code and then download it for your operating system. Once you installed and started the software, this window should pop up. And then as the next step, you are going to click on this building blocks on the left called extensions and then you can download any extension you need for your project. In order to use the Teensy inside the Visual Studio Code framework, you have to search for platform I.O. and then install it. After the installation, a tiny symbol of the head of an end should appear. Below the tab P.I.O. Home, click on Open and then New Project. And maybe let's call our new project Modulo Alpha and then select the Teensy 4.1 for your board. As you can see, the Arduino framework is already given once you pick the Teensy. There are many subfolders inside the Modulo Alpha folder. And for the main part of the code, we are going to use the subfolder called SRC, which stands for source. Inside the folder, there is already a CPP file, which stands for C++, the language which we are going to basically use and you would use for every kind of Arduino based program. You can also see that there is this um, hashtag include arduino.h in those angle brackets and it basically stands for um, the h stands for a header file and you can find every necessary function of the arduino library inside of the header file so you are going to include it all the time in order to use the arduino framework inside of visual studio code there are also two functions called void setup and void loop and void basically defines the type of the function if you would say for example int loop which stands for integer then the function should return a number without a fraction so let's say 3 5 or 10 but nothing like 3.4 or 7.8 or anything with a fracture by choosing the void type, the function is not going to return anything, but it's the, your code is still going to execute it. So yesterday I was preparing the video for you and I was thinking about a good example for you to make this whole code a little bit more understandable and the whole structure of the Arduino based codes. And I was thinking of the example of a car. So. If you sit in a car before you would drive anywhere, you have to do some stuff in order to start the car. So you have to open the door, you have to sit in your car, and then you have to uh, turn on your engine. So that would be basically your setup function. You are going to write in every function which has to execute once, only once. So you are not going to start your car over and over again. but then there is the loop function and inside a loop function you are going to place every function which has to be executed all the time just like the engine running all the time and the wheels rotating and yeah also functions like the brake pedal you know so if, if you press on the brake pedal then it's going to turn on and then you're going to brake um, so it would come into the loop function too but it would be some kind of statement like an if statement you know some let's say if you press the brake then the car is going to brake so but I'm going to explain them a little bit later how you can use the if statements and for loops and so on so one of the standard functions which you see at Arduino codes all the time is the pin mode function and you can use it to access any pin on the Teensy board or even on an Arduino, I mean not even. And this pin mode function wants two input values. So the first value is going to be the number of the pin. Let's say you have an LED uh, connected to pin 8 then you are going to write at the first place an 8 and on the second one you are going to pick whether it's an in or an output. In our case we are going to take an output because we want to um, turn on the internal LED. The built-in LED is actually at pin 13. So we are going to write 13 separated by a comma and then output because we are sending something, you know, we, we are sending signals or current to our LED. 
So that's basically all you are going to need in the setup function. Like if you are using the analogy again, which I just uh, came up with before with the car, it's something you are going to do only once, you know, and now the code knows that it's an output and it's pin th 13. And now you are going to go to the loop function because what we are going to do is make the LED light up and uh, then turn off again. So it's going to blink basically, nothing too fancy. So first you are going to need the digital write function and you can see that the inputs are pretty much the same like in um, the first function, in the setup function. But at the first place it's the pin number, so you are going to pick pin 13 again. And at the second place, it's not output, output or input, but it's high or low. And high or low is basically zero and one. I mean, high would be one and zero would be low. So by, by typing in high at pin 13, you are going to turn on the LED and that's all it does. And then in the next line, you're going to write delay and 1000. The delay function is actually there to hold up your whole code at the point where it is. And um, the input value is actually in milliseconds. So taking a thousand seconds, uh, I mean a thousand milliseconds, it's going to be one second. So we are going to write delay thousand. So it's going to have a delay of one second. And then in the next line, we are going to write the same digital write function. But instead of taking the value high, we are going to take low. So at, after one second, the LED is going to turn off. And then we are going to insert one more delay and it's going to wait one more second because of the delay function and then it's going to jump back at the top of the function of the loop function and it's going to start over and over so that's the whole code and you can upload it by clicking on the right arrow at the bottom on the blue tab and now you should actually see your teensy blinking and by changing the delay time to let's say 400 or 300 it's going to turn on and off more rapidly so you can play around with it a little bit so next i'm going to show you a tiny code snippet which you can use to test whether your audio shield is working or not so you're going to look up pjrc and then you should find the pjrc audio design tool on the on the official page and by using this tool, you can basically build many systems or patches. You can call them however you like to. You maybe know the program Max MSP or Max for Life. And it actually uses pretty much the same idea. So by, let's say, connecting a sine wave generator to an output, you can generate a sine wave and you can hear it because it's connected to an output. So in our small code, we are going to build a sine wave generator with an output and we are also going to need the SGTL5000 um, which is just an object which is not going to be connected but it's for the audio shield because it's the chip sitting on it. Um, so we are going to pick the sine object from the tab since and then we are going to the output section and take E to S and now you can connect the sign to both of the inlets of the E to S output and uh, inputs are basically for left and right so if you would only have one then it would be mono but in our case it's stereo and the last component you're going to need is the SGTL5000 which you can find at the bottom in the last tab called control and you don't have to connect it to anything it's just um, there so that your code recognizes that you are going to use an audio shield with the chip SGTR5000 um, and yeah that's actually everything you're going to need now your patch is ready and now you are probably asking yourself how you are going to implement it in your code and you can do it simply by clicking on export at the top of the screen you can see the button in uh, red and you are going to copy the whole code and just paste it inside your Visual Studio code window. 
One important thing is not to forget about the Arduino um, hashtag include part because you are going to need it every time you use uh, an Arduino inside of Visual Studio Code. But below that you can paste the whole code uh, which you just copied in. Now you have your whole code or your whole patch inside of Visual Studio Code and um, Arduino understands it or Teensy. And you can see that there are all the wire connections and the sine wave generator which is called sine one in our case and so on and so on and what we are going to do now is go to the setup function first so inside the setup function you're going to write for serial.begin and then inside the brackets you can write uh, 38400 which is the baud rate it basically gives the teensy the amount of data in bits which it can transmit in one second so it transmits uh, 38400 in one second bits so yeah but depending on your teensy board or any kind of board it can be a different value too so just look it up and um, type in the right value so the next function you're going to use is the audio memory which you use to allocate the memory for all audio connections you have inside your code. So one unit would be 128 samples. So if you type in audio memory and inside the brackets one, then you're going to have 128 eight samples saved for audio. And that would be roughly three seconds so depending on your project you can take a, a larger size or a smaller size it's just up to you i will take 15 and uh, if you want to read a little bit more about that you can just check it up on the pjrc page because you can also take an audio memory max value and then you can find out how much of the memory actually you are using and yeah you can just make it a little bit uh, more optimal for your code but we are not going to care about it now then the the sgtl5000 enable function just activates the audio shield or to be a little bit more exact it activates the chip on the audio shield the the volume function is going to set the maximal volume you're going to have and uh, by taking 0.8 it's the maximal level of volume which is not going to distort so i would highly recommend you to take something below 0.8 and you should be safe then so your sine one is going to be your sine wave object. We are going to talk a little bit more about objects later on, but first you just have to know that it's the thing what generates you a sine wave. And you can access all the functions of this object by, let's say, sine one dot frequency. Then you can assess the frequency function and type into the brackets 400. So now, the first oscillator, your sine 1 object, is going to oscillate with a frequency of 400 Hz. And that's what you want to take. You can take a higher value too if you want to die and have some ear pains, but I would take 400 and I'm happy with that. And then in the next one you, get, you are going to take the function amplitude and let's just set it to 0 0.5. I would really I would really recommend you not to take too high values for volume because it's you you don't even need one second to be deaf <laughs> so don't do it i did it it's not good <laughs> so now you are done with the code we are not going to type in anything else and by clicking on the right arrow at the bottom of the at the blue bar you should be able to upload it to your teensy so make sure to connect your teensy of course to your computer and now if you take your headphones and plug in the jack cable inside the audio socket on your audio shield you should be able to hear a pure sine wave so if it's not working you can begin to troubleshoot so the code should actually work i mean i tried it and it, it works perfectly you could actually test whether you didn't solder everything the right way I also got some critique because I didn't solder it so nicely and it's really true so I will work on that a little bit in the future but I found actually one pin which wasn't properly connected to the audio shield and yeah then I was just soldering it again to the pin and now it's working so I would 
really look for hardware problems if the code is not working. But you can let me know in the comments and you can call me, you can write me, you can send me a letter yeah, or just stand in front of my house, whatever you want to. And yeah, I would be really, really happy to get likes and subscriptions and whatever, whatever. <laughs> I would be just happy to uh, see that people are interested in the videos. And and yeah, that's all. So I hope you are going to have a nice week and I hope you are going to be able to make your audio shield sing. And yeah. Have a nice day. Bye and thanks for watching.